Mac OS Mojave represents one of the biggest updates to the Mac in quite some time. There are a number of new features and we're going to check them out. Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here for Apple Insider. We're going to dive through over 90 changes and features here in Mac OS Mojave, so let's go ahead and dive in. Starting off right here on our desktop, we need to clean that up and we're going to use a new feature called Stacks. Stacks allow you to easily organize all the files that get thrown on your desktop makes it a lot less cluttered and look a whole lot better. You can sort by a few different options there, but we're gonna sort by type. So you can see all the images are one, screenshots are in one, movies are in one. Makes it really easy to find what you're looking for, expand it, get at it, and close it up. Also of note, and you're clearly looking at it right now, is the brand new dark mode. It looks pretty darn awesome, and there's a lot of little nuances that go along with it. Of course, we have the dark menu bar along the top, but we have an all new dock to go along with it. We also here have a dark trash can icon, that's definitely changed, and we have this really, really nice wallpaper of the Mojave. It looks pretty darn awesome, and especially as you change throughout the day, this is known as a dynamic wallpaper, and it can actually change its kind of viewpoint and its coloring as the day moves on. Since we're checking out all of our files here right on our desktop, let's take a look at a few changes to Quick Look. It has become a whole lot more powerful. Notably, there is now markup support. So markup, you may be familiar with this on iOS or in the preview app, but now it's right here within Quick Look. So you can just tap spacebar on a file, gives you a quick preview. You can go in there, add a signature, draw on it, crop down images. It's pretty handy. You can also rotate them, which works really well for just a quick rotation of an image that's oriented the wrong way. If you happen to open some other type of file, like perhaps a movie or a screen recording, those can now be trimmed right from within Quick Look. So you don't have to open it but in QuickTime, save it as an extra file, all that. Just open it up, spacebar, open it here, Quick Look, tap on the new trim icon along the top, and cut it down to size. Not only does this work here inside of videos, but it works with audio as well. So if you have any audio files, those can easily be trimmed up at the same time. Moving on, there are a few new changes in Finder, and some of these are pretty darn awesome. If you still use Finder instead of a third-party option, you may be pretty happy here, especially if you look at a lot of media, which is something that I definitely do. Looking at the view options along the top, we have some familiar ones that we've always had in the past, but the last one is brand new, and it is called Gallery View. Not only does it give you a better picture of what you're actually looking at with those galleries along the bottom, as you easily scrub through some media, but on the right-hand side, we have a new sidebar. This gives you a bunch of different metadata. It gives you a collapsed view at first, especially in a smaller window, but it expands out to pretty much show you everything you need to see, including what camera or what lens you may have been using to take that photos, the color gamut that you're looking at, just a whole bunch of information that can be really handy, especially for people dealing with lots of media. We also have three different quick action buttons. So these are contextual based on what you're looking at. You can even convert images into a PDF or save a file with a password. One last super minor change for Finder users. If you go up to the menu bar, go to preferences, there is now a new keep folders on top on desktop option. So before there we only had one option there. Now there are actually two separate ones so you can keep those folders on top on the desktop when you're looking at a bunch of different files and folders. Taking a quick peek back down at the dock at the bottom, we have a new section here. This is the recent section, which is ported over from the iPad on iOS. I love this on iOS, and I love it even more here on the Mac. It is super, super handy at kind of showing you off different apps that you may need to use. We have a whole host of changes to check out in the preferences, some you may or may not care about, but starting off in general. Right along the top, you used to have the option to choose the dark or light menu bar. Obviously, that's changed because instead of dark and light mode for menu bar, we have a full system-wide dark and light mode. Now, what's really cool here is you could see that dynamic wallpaper changing as we changed modes. So this isn't actually setting inside of the screensavers, but as you change and throughout the time of the day, the actual background will change color based on where the sun is in your location. There's a new accent color option. There are several different options to choose from, and you can see how they play into effect right here as I jump through. And the default, of course, is going to be blue. If we back it on up and take a look at screen savers, you're gonna notice we have a little bit of a small change here. Instead of having an option for a random screen saver down on the list on the left-hand side, uh, that's been removed, it's no longer there. But instead, we do have a checkbox that does the same thing along the bottom. So instead of choosing on the left, if you want random screen savers, you just check this box and you're good to go. 
as we navigate away from screensavers, we're going to take a look at mission control real quick. There was one small change. We have these four options for different shortcuts for your keyboard and mouse. The mouse options that were on the right hand side, those have all been removed in this beta. You may have noticed a new icon here in system preferences, and that is for updates. Now system updates are right here inside of the system preferences. Really handy to keep track of and can maybe it makes a little bit more sense because obviously that's where they are on iOS. Also inside of here, there's a new advanced auto update option. So it gives you a little bit more granular control over updates for your apps and your OS. Checking out the iCloud settings, there are a few new changes here. For instance, there's a new news option added here. There's a new stocks option added here and there's a new home option added here. All three of those are new because of course they are new apps that we're gonna look at in a minute. So all those can sync iCloud data and they're stored right here within the iCloud preferences inside of settings. One auto mission at this point though is there is no option for voice memos. This is another new app, but there is no option to save it over iCloud. Maybe that feature will be coming down the line as we get close to release, but at least right now, voice memos do not get saved inside of iCloud. If we take a look at internet accounts though, you'll notice a few things that are not here, and that is notably Facebook and Twitter sign-ins. Those used to be options, you could have them in here right in the OS to share things through Facebook and Twitter, that has been completely scrubbed. To get something like that back, you just have to install the third-party apps and share through the share sheet. A quick pop into the accessibility settings under switch control. We have an option down at the bottom that allows platform switching to control your computer. That is a new option for anyone using that. Also, there's a new tab along the top inside of switch control for typing the two options inside of there. Also, I want to give a quick mention to new improvements to the international keyboard. If you're using international keyboards, there should be some improvements along the way that you may notice. Anyone who does a lot of screen recording is really going to appreciate these new features, and that is a whole new overall to screen captures. There's now a little overlay menu bar that shows up. You have a few different options, just like the whole screen, selected window, selected uh, regions. Then there's new screen recording options, which used to be in QuickTime, but that has now been added to the screen capture stuff. And there are now options on the right, including where you're saving the files, adding a timer, and optionally showing the mouse cursor. It'll even show when the mouse actually takes a click action, which you may even be noticing as we go throughout this video, because I did use these new screen capture tools to create this. Once a screen capture is done, whether a video or an image, it'll show up in that bottom right hand corner, similar to iOS. You can then jump in and do all the stuff that we looked at already with markup or trimming. Any of those things are now available, which means you can take a screenshot, edit it right there and send it off through a share sheet or something, copying into your clipboard without ever having to save that file locally. It is pretty awesome when dealing with a lot of screen captures. Continuing the continuity features that Apple introduced in the past, there's a new really awesome one, which is camera capture. This actually allows you to use your phone to capture images and scans and import them right into Mac OS. It works across the system in a variety of different applications. So for instance, I'm in notes right now, but it'll also work in things like pages, keynote, and numbers. I want to scan in my puppy's class schedule. I can just hit insert from phone, take a scan on my phone, and this will show up converted, flattened into a PDF. Looks very, very nice. I can go ahead and jump into markup and do any of that. Aside from actual scans, which are very handy and show as PDFs, you optionally have the option to put in photos instead of scans. So we go through the same whole process, up to file, insert from phone, and now we're gonna choose a photo instead of a scan. Just how it deals with it differently, whether it's converting it into a flattened and white balanced PDF or a full blown image. You do have to be running iOS 12 to get this to work, but it works exceptionally well, even on these early betas. So we're very, very impressed with it and can't wait to see other applications use that to add images from your phone. We also see that it might be able to work in other areas inside of just within applications. For instance, it should be able to work right here from within Finder or on your desktop. There is still the option if I go up to file, I can still insert from my phone, or if I right click on the actual desktop, there's the option as well. So it seems like the option is there, but they're disabled and grayed out. But we know they work because we were able to demo them in the Photos app. So what's going on here? We're not completely certain. It'll either, either be removed or it'll be added right here into other areas of the OS. FaceTime got some major upgrades over on the iOS side of things. There's tons of new effects and filters and Animoji heads you can place on yourself. Over on the macOS side, it's pretty small upgrades, but they're definitely still there. 
We have a slight change in the UI. The tabs in the tops have changed from audio and video to all and missed. You can see as we go through to add people, you can now add multiple people because group FaceTime is now a thing, whether for audio or for a video. It makes it really handy to get on a video call or an audio call with up to 32 different participants, either on macOS or iOS. We have four new applications coming to macOS this year. First up, and probably one of my favorites, is News. The popular news application from iPhone and iPad has finally made its way to the Mac. You can view all the different categories and your favorites along the left-hand side, jump in stories, watch videos. It works really, really well. I love reading the news application. You can get news alerts coming in, save stories for later. It syncs across iCloud, so as long as you read something in one place and on the other, it works very, very seamlessly. News is also baked into the brand new Stocks app. You can see all your stocks on the left hand side, go ahead and view charts on the top, and see all the different news that relates to that company right there. Again, that also syncs over iCloud. Voice memos, at least so far, does not sync over iCloud, but we have a whole new app similar to the app that we saw added to the iPad. Voice memos is now on the iPad for the first time. You have a bit of quality control, really easy way to take audio recordings a whole lot easier than having to do them through QuickTime. And the last new app is going to be Home. That's right, because now HomeKit has come to the Mac, brand new for the first time, which includes everything you'd expect HomeKit to be able to do. Triggering lights, creating scenes. There's a few different limitations, like right now you can't use people triggers or conditions, and you cannot add accessories. But other than that, it's pretty much a full on Home app that we see on the iPad and on the iPhone. You can even use intercoms with cameras. All of these apps were ported over directly from iOS, and soon, coming in 2019, developers will be able to do the same thing with their mobile applications. Now that HomeKit is available on the Mac, that means Siri is now available to do all of those different HomeKit commands on the Mac as well. Jumping into Siri, you can see all the different commands that you can ask her, including turning lights on and off, setting scenes, or asking about various statuses. Siri actually got a bunch of other new features here in Mac OS, including it can find your saved passwords, just go ahead and ask her. It knows a whole bunch more about food, celebrities, and about motorsports. While some apps were completely new here in Mac OS Mojave, some apps just got a big major overhaul, notably the Mac App Store. It looks pretty phenomenal now, it looks very much like it does over on iOS. There's a lot of curated content from Apple's editors and a bunch of stories that you can go in that kind of gives you information on apps and ideas and lists and a bunch of really neat stuff. We have a series of tabs, all new down the left hand side. The only one that we used to have before was updates and categories. Updates here, you can see we have updates for apps, but updates for macOS have been removed. And if you click on your account in the bottom left hand corner, you can see all of your purchase history as well. They did remove the name of the developer from updates and from purchase history. So if you actually wanted to see who made a particular app, if for some reason you needed to do that, you'd actually have to jump into that app specifically to be able to do that. Aside from the Mac App Store, Xcode 10 also got a pretty major overhaul. There's a bunch of new security features here in Mojave, which requires apps to get your approval before accessing the camera or mic, enhanced tracking prevention, automatically suggesting really strong passwords, and flagging passwords that are frequently used when you try to enter them. A lot of those security changes are present here in Safari, but Safari also got a few other little improvements that we want to point out. Jumping into preferences, the first one that we want to look at is you can actually now add fave icons to the tabs inside of Safari. Go over to tabs, and then you'll see at the bottom there's a new option for showing website icons in tabs. Once you enable that, and you have more than one tab going, you'll start to see the little icons going alongside. It makes Safari look a little bit better, especially compared to Chrome, it was very monotone and boring looking. Now we have some color, some icons, making it easy to distinguish what you're looking at when you're trying to find things. When we move over to the Passwords tab, we'll notice a few different things, notably a whole bunch of exclamation marks and yellow warning signs going down the right hand side. All of those are letting you know that those passwords may have been reused before and you might want to consider changing them. You'll notice the exclamation and triangles there and what that warning means on the bottom left hand side of the window. If we select one of those, there is now an option to view password or login details right there, which gives you the username, the password, and the website where it's used. Safari makes it really easy to change the password right here within this window, where you can also airdrop that password if you want to send it over to someone else. And of course, when you're finished, you can go ahead and hit done. A few other minor changes, the block pop-up window option was removed from inside of preferences, the plugin section of websites in the preferences pane was removed, 
and Safari is now able to do one-time security code autofill. Makes it really handy when you get texted that security code to input, just a lot easier, similar to what we see on iOS. Inside of the Photos app, we had two options swapped around, levels and curves, both swapped spots when you're going to edit an actual photo. The iBooks app was renamed Apple Books, and we'll just say Books from now on. Inside of the Mail app, there is now Suggested Folders. There's a Move To button added right there in the navigation bar. When you're composing a message, there's a new emoji picker, making it really easy to add some emojis in there, especially if you don't have the touch bar on your machine. The DVD player app got an entirely new redesign, though I don't have any DVDs to try to play, but it has a new icon that looks pretty boring. Rewritten in app kit is 64-bit, supports the touch bar, and has a whole new UI, even though it gets really messed up when you're trying to do a screen recording. There's a new version of Metal 2. It now has Core ML2, which is the machine learning. There's a brand new login screen that was not completely working for me. There's new save and open panels throughout the OS. The Apple file system now works on hard drives as well as Fusion drives. Looking at the more technical stuff, there's now UI language parity, W3C web driver support, open type SVG font support, improved CSS color support, faster wake time from sleep, Automator shortcuts can be added to the touch bar, and there's probably a few other things that we neglected to mention. macOS Mojave launches this fall, so let us know what you think down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.